Smart Alec, did you? Oh wait, yeah you did. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to our demonstration on bottle stopper turning today. Now I know all you guys are turners already. How many have turned bottle stoppers already? Wow, okay, just one of you. Oh, cool. It's on the manual, I just haven't started it yet. Okay. <laughs> so you can lie and none of us will know anything about it. I wouldn't do that to you. Well, let's start with a couple of real basic things here then. Your, your bottle stopper itself, it comes in, they come in two different sizes, basically, okay? This particular threaded post is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter with 16 threads per inch, okay? This particular one, uh, stainless steel, not plated stainless, but solid stainless steel, food grade, okay? This is one of the chrome plated ones. This uses a quarter inch by 20 threads per inch threaded stud. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of with the chrome is that y it will react with uh, certain types of wine and cause corrosion in the plating. Uh, so you, you want to make sure that you're, you're careful with that. If you stick with the stainless steel or if you stick with uh, the titanium platings, you won't have any issues like that. But just be aware that the chrome can, can react with some, some different types of wines uh, and cause some, some corrosion in the, in the plating. Okay? Kind of important to know. Another thing to keep in mind is that just because we call these wine bottle stoppers doesn't mean that they can't be used in other types of bottles. For instance, if next to your stove you like to keep a bottle of balsamic vinegar or olive oil or you know any of those other types of things, uh, the stainless steel food grade stoppers will work very well in those bottles as well. Okay, so just just a couple things about about the stoppers themselves. They do come in several different styles as far as the stopper part itself, but what we're really primarily concerned with right now would be the, th the, uh, the threaded stud. 3 eighths by 16, quarter by 20, uh, 5 sixteenths drill for the 3 eighths, and 7 30 seconds. Yeah, 7 30 seconds on the, the quarter 20. Okay, now in some materials, you can take this and just drill your hole and screw it right into that. And it will kind of self-tap itself, okay? But one thing that you'll find with materials like really, really hard woods or acrylics, that kind of thing, one thing that you'll find much easier is if you actually drill your hole first and then tap it. Now there's several different ways that you can use a tap. You can, you can use it in just a, a T-handle like this, okay? Or you can put your, your Jacob's chuck in your tailstock, put your blank in a four-jaw chuck so that everything's nice and square and centered. Then you can just simply advance that in. I usually will opt just for a threaded uh, a, a T-handle. Now, you wanna make sure when you're starting this that you have your tap as square to your blank as you can get it. And then it's just a matter of running the tap down in there. It's good to clear the chip every so often so that it doesn't destroy the threads that you just cut. Trust me, that will happen. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> just trust me when I say it will happen. There's no scientific formula for how far in you want to you want to thread this. You want to make sure that it's deep enough that when you screw it onto your mandrel or when you screw it onto your stopper itself, that it will bottom out. Okay, but other than that, that should be deep enough. There's really no scientific method to it. Uh, I suppose that you could you know you could measure the little threaded stud and make a mark on your tap or you know however. However anal you wanted to be about it, I suppose. Oh, isn't that a wonderful noise? Okay, so that's now tapped. We can grab the little stopper itself. 
So there you go. Just put the little rubber thing in and you're all done. No, just kidding. We still got to turn it. So that's that's basically that's basically how we got to the step to the point that we're at right here. Okay. So what we're going to turn here today, this is a piece of stabilized buckeye burl. Okay. What's that, Harry? This is the this is a collet chuck. You can hold these mandrels in a variety of ways. Um, I'm using a what's called a collet chuck. You can put it in a, a Jacobs chuck, like a drill chuck, on a Morse taper. Put that in the headstock. The thing that I like about a collet chuck is that I can work without the live center. Okay, this screws right onto the spindle, just like so. Screws right onto the spindle. Now I can work without a without a, a live center out here at the end. Gives you a little bit more freedom in the, the turning itself. It also relieves you of the necessity to have a tool rest about three inches long. Because if I had my life center up here, you can see that my tool rests, I wouldn't be able to get in very close to the workpiece. So on a collet chuck like this, I don't have to worry about a live center, I can get right in close to the work. Easy wood tool. If you haven't used these guys already, I highly recommend them. In some respects in that it, it, it's another form of spindle turning okay pin turning is for all intents and purposes spindle turning uh, so that's basically what we're doing here um, so you'll notice that my my elbows locked in at my side and I'm doing the little the little dance back and forth you know you just shift your weight one foot to the other keeps you going in that nice straight line Here already we're starting to reveal the real character of Buckeye Burl. Buckeye Burl is one of the most beautiful woods you'll ever see. Um, you'll see all manner of colors come out of these things. Uh, you'll see burls, uh, especially Buckeye it seems, are very prone to what's called voids and inclusions, which are these little, you know, little holes, little pocket looking things here. I will very often not even attempt to do anything with those. I'll just let those, you know, be the character of the wood. You know, uh, wood is a natural product, uh, you know, it's going to have imperfections in it. Uh, and sometimes, as I think anyway, it's better to just let those be. Just let them show, let the character of the wood come through. Um, so we're getting nice and round now. Now, one nice thing that they've done for us with these mandrels is they've actually given us a bushing. Okay, just like with pin turning, we have a bushing. This little ring right here will simulate this diameter right here. Okay, so it's kind of handy. Getting a lot of dust there, Harry. Okay, so the nice thing about bottle stoppers is you have no you have no real preconceived design 
elements that you have to worry about about meeting here. You know, with pin turning, you've got to you know you've got to taper into the bushings and make them nice and smooth and all that. Well, this is the only point that you have to worry about that. Okay, on a bottle stopper. So we can make this basically any shape we want. I could just come in here, taper this from you know half an inch or so right down into the bushing. You know, do something nice on the end here to clean it up and and you know call it good. You know, you can do something very very simple like that with a bottle stopper. And we kind of true this up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's see. Let's kind of let's kind of do the same thing out here at the other end. On this one, fairly simple here. And there you go. We can check just like we do with the pin. You want to make sure you have just that little bit of a shoulder there for your sanding, which we do. And we'll do sanding in basically the same way we do with a pin. We'll just step through several grits of paper here pretty quickly. I'm going to run through the micro mess real quick here. Everybody knows what micro mesh is. And there we go. Pretty piece of wood. Okay, we're going to apply just a real quick and easy little friction finish to it. You can use really any kind of finish that you want to on these. Um, if you're going to use a CA glue finish, for instance, then I would definitely, definitely recommend that you keep your design as simple as possible. Because otherwise you'll be fighting to get that glue down in all those little nooks and crannies, and you'll, you'll find yourself wishing, what was I thinking? <laughs> right. You'll sometimes do that with a friction finish too, though, trust me. But uh, CA glue, you know, it, it, it's a nice finish, but for a project like this, I'm not sure it would be one that I would choose. Uh, however, you could use any of your typical woodworking finishes, you know, um, varnish, lacquer, you know, any of those things. Um, just take your pick. <laughs> Alrighty, get that on there, bump the speed of the lathe way up, and just like with a pin. And there you have it, one Buckeye Burl bottle stopper. Now if you look right here, there's one of those little voids that I was telling you about. Can you see why I like to kind of leave those alone sometimes? I mean they really, this probably would have benefited from a little alcohol rub. I see some, some little sanding, you know, a little sanding dust down inside some of these. Um, and I will probably do that when I take this home. But uh, it, the, the voids and inclusions can really add a lot to the character of the, the finished piece. So there you have it. Bottle stopper turning 101. Any questions? Comments?